Namaskar and welcome to this exciting episode of Satology Debunking Mythology. Satology means science of truth or study of truth. Opposite of that is mythology, which means a science of study of fake lie or imagination. So according to biblical mythology, all other cultures are not civilized, pretty much. And today I have a very great friend, is Mahamuni, some people call him Mahamuni in the, on the show, and then Acharya, teacher, and sadhaka and yogi and very good researcher Sri Nilesh Nilkant Oak. By the introduction also people you know actually whom I'm talking about. <laughs> These titles are reserved for him only. Uh, so the one question comes to the mind uh, Nilesh ji is that even you produce all evidences in the world. So you know our psychology our program is very simple. You know, we have already been convinced by Vyasdev. So whatever Vyasdev has said, we consider it as an axiomatic truth. And we research on it to prove whether it is right or wrong. So for our understanding, not for others, hmm. our understanding. Hmm. So we are already convinced. But Vyasdev has said, whatever history is not written in Mahabharat, so if any history doesn't connect with Mahabharat, that is a fake history. So he's mm-hmm. the first one to call everyone as mythology yes, and, or a fake history. You know, the fake news is the first one. But if you, even if you present all the evidences to them, they're not going to believe you because they've already made up their mind to Europeanism that we are superior. Okay. Mm. So why not we change the tactic? We stop asking them to accept us. We say, we start rejecting them. This is mm. your nonsense. Like mm. the, all the American universities, when you command on the Western University, they, they will, like you always say, few people are very good, like Mark mm. Twain and many researchers are very honest. So they are part of us now. So they are, we, we have accepted them. Mm. But rest of the people we reject, start rejecting. And then mm. we ask them evidences for what is their problem. Yeah. You know, unless we change that paradigm, we won't come out of this rut. So we say this is a fact. And yours is mythology. Now, please tell us, give us evidences of what you say. Correct. What do you, what do you say of that approach? Okay. No, that's a great point. Uh, and uh, in some fashion, Aditya Ji, I would say uh, what you just summarized, I started uh, at least in a, with a evidence based because unless I see if I was thinking just in my mind, say for 30 years, But if I have not said it anywhere outside, it's not documented. uh, Or if it's, I have not written anything about it, no one would believe it. So therefore I'm saying, let's go back to 2011, you know, some 10 plus years ago. If you take my first book, when did the Mahabharata war happen? And again, you know, I discuss Mahabharata, I discuss Ramayana, I discuss Vedas, you know, you and me discuss Vyasadev's writing is because that's what, uh, you know, that's like uh, uh, what you call, um, Satatam right? That is that is our style. That's that's what we. Yeah, yeah. Complete that. Kathayantascha manityam, right? Yeah. Or maybe I'm saying the other part, the second part. Um, but uh, it's a katha for us. Okay, it's a Krishna Krishna uh, uh, Krishna katha. That is what is going on. Krishna Leela. Uh, those people who have not done this they will not understand it. You know, I was lucky to come in contact with uh, some good uh, in just like uh, Raja Mulatra ji calls intellectual Kshatriya. I would say I was lucky to come in contact with intellectual Kshatriya Bhakta at a relatively young age. And that benefited me. So uh, to your point, like why go on a defensive? In a way, that's what you're saying. Like it's just try to say, please accept me. You know, hey, come on, you are not right. Here is the evidence. Why, why bother? Why bother to convince them? And I completely agree. I agree for many reasons. In fact, that's why I'm taking you back to 2011 <clears throat> when I published my When Did the Mahabharat War Happen? The Mystery of Arundhati. At that time, when I looked at many books, uh, the existing books on uh, uh, Indian historical narratives from a, uh, just for the discussion purposes, understand, like call it a pro-India side, you know, versus a anti-India, breaking India side. Breaking India side 
will naturally do what they want to do. Okay, so they have they have no care whatsoever. They have no care. They have no respect for truth or for Indian history. Their idea is to push their agenda by hook or crook. So that's given. I mean, that agenda is very uh, evil, but it's there. It's there for anyone to see. Now, you will find people actually fail to see it. Our people, I'm saying the, the people who will otherwise have a, a flag of India in their hand, uh, they will uh, ask you or me the question, why are you using the word India, but not Bharat and so on. Okay, so they will get uh, stuck on something that is trivial, trivial in the context of the bigger challenges that we have, but they will not understand this challenge. If you look at my book, uh, so let me give you the contrast. Like most of the other people <coughs> will always start, <coughs> the, um, they will always start with William Jones. William Jones came and, you know, came to Calcutta and he was a judge and he started talking and about this, the greatness of a Sanskrit language. And these, our folks are very happy that William Jones is praising Sanskrit. And then how this did, he looked at the genealogy. See, our... Uh, Aditya ji, our obsession, I mean, again, you know, yes, we are talking about the breaking India forces, but we let, we, meaning even the so-called pro-Indic people, let this breaking India forces, uh, we put them on a pedestal for no reason. I mean, that's the point you are actually talking. Why, why care? Why care about what they're saying? Uh, especially when they are blurting out whatever nonsense they want to blurt out without any respect, any care for evidence, evidence of uh, all kinds, Pratyaksha Anumana, so they don't care for a science, they don't understand science, but also they don't understand Shruti and Smriti, they don't understand our Itihasa, right? So what I did with that first book, and that has continued in all my works, is I didn't start with uh, William Jones, I didn't start with Max Muller, Witzel, what they're saying, it does not matter. Now people will say, do the Purva Paksha. Well, Purva Paksha also comes into the picture because if, assuming somebody has a claim that is established with evidence, you don't bother about the Purva Paksha when, uh, when some madcap is talking. Okay, the madcap can be in a very important, apparently important position in a people size. You know, it could be academia, it could be a politics, whatever it is, think tanks. None of this matters. In my book, I just started, it says, here is a Mahabharata. Vasudeva has written this. Here is a glorious tradition, deep antiquity of deep antiquity of Indian astronomy. In the modern science, uh, the cosmology or astronomy is the most successful theory of the modern science. Many people don't know that as much as we have progressed in 10 different ways in the modern science. And we have, you know, we have the computers and we have everything. Uh, people will struggle to tell you the second most successful theory. Okay, now with the genetics and all that, we can talk about evolution. You know, again, you can go to the Shautar of Vishnu and you can see the, uh, you know, seeds of it. My point is, I did not, if you take my first book or second or third, I do not talk about what these breaking India forces are talking about Indian history. None. Zero. And so I'm completely agreeing with you. We don't need to do it. We simply need to put forward our proposal put forward the evidence that backs it up. And here, guys, take it or leave it. That's right. right. And I see all my, in all my books also, I've maintained the same <coughs> thing. Because I, we have convincing, we are convinced by Valmiki's historical, uh, historical like recordings. Like he has recorded many things like the star positions, the geography of the planet, very mm -hmm. accurately. Mm -hmm. Like the mountains are so accurately depicted in Ramayana. Yeah. And, while, and Mahabharata has con continued the same terms. Mahabharata has just solidified our faith that, and also physical observation. Correct. We see Khan Tegri today also, same place, mm -hmm. which is uh, Meru Parvat. And we see Himalaya in the same place, Mandarachal in the same place. Rivers have also same, like which river is meeting where, like the Shona Bhadra Nadi yeah. uh, going north, east from southwest. Hmm. The same path of the monsoon. Yeah. It has not changed. Giri is still there. Yes. 
and the path of giri uh, sonabhadra in ramayana is mentioned going through and shaloba nadi shadoba nadi same things up up in the north right outside kailasha there up and, north of kailash yeah and and you and i will be shocked in my book also i kept it sardyaj nadi same meaning sardyaj ah, ah. exactly that's the name of the river sardyaj in ah. uh, today people can search in kyrgyzstan and the uttar kurus boundaries are accurately mentioned and but uh, you know like when we say chatriya you know क्षत्रिय like through our own ideas when we try to invent things we actually destroy the human potential yeah. don't you think so okay no great great point and i will ask you to recite those verses again now think of it uh, so uh, you quoted the kshatriya uh, for kshatriya uh, varna what is the first one the the brahman uh, the brahman version brahman is uh, b- uh, the the brahman version is Actually, Kaliyuga memory is there, so yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, shamo tapas tapas cha cha cham shoryam cha cham shantir arjam ayu cha kyanam vikyanam astikyam brahma karma sabhav. Sabhav cham, huh? And then you read the list of uh, uh, the kshatriya. Kshatriya. Now, uh, now you don't have to read those again, but as you see them again, if you have it in front of you, look at and you said correctly that there is no overlap. okay i will also talk of a overlap you know but it's of a common minimum program okay common minimum program yeah but karma, here, karma is a overlap everywhere karma is overlap but something else i'll tell you you know which is which is this yesterday i had a discussion with another great uh, i would say intellectual kshatriyani you know based in america very interesting discussion and if relevant i'll bring that up but look at the first two list or the list for the brahman varna and kshatriya varna okay uh, just say few few words like say the individual words you know tamo tamas tapas chacham yeah right yeah. and what is this said this is said karma uh, sorry these are said these are the brahman karma right karma, karma of a brahmana brahman now karma. read the kshatriya uh, verse or you already have it by heart there sarya tejo dhriti daksham yeah uh, then yeah, no, not running Yudhe away from the battlefield right yudhe cha palayanam danam ishwara bhavascha Huh. now there is no dan there is no shorya for brahman yeah. no teja correct shorya the driti driti is also not there yes that's where the karna was punished driti yeah daksha is not there yes you know uh, and and yeah no no good so and and one point i want to bring about that versus the other one is again look at dano meaning that datrutva vrutti of course the person has to do it when the when the rubber meets the road right but if you focus on the first two you will say actually these are uh, what you can say virtues these are your intrinsic nature you know that brahman and kshatriya is given that actually they are not a karma see uh, ability ability or internal attitude of not running away from the battlefield is a vrutti actually the person will be tested during the war only Yeah. but a person is called kshatriya when before the war like before going there so these are guna pradhan they are karma but they are guna pradhan and then if you uh, krushi go raksha vanijyam right. right if you go naksha yeah, and uh, paricharyatmakam karma okay so that is only one given but, now there directly work is given krushi go raksha vanijyam okay agriculture go raksha okay so right. like rearing of a cows and vanijyam commerce very specific activities my point is the first two they all have to do the karma but there is a change of emphasis and as you said very beautifully there is no overlap now where is the overlap maybe we are bitting bit digressing from our subject but that's fine but see these are the intricacies that a uh, ordinary mind unless the person is willing to put investment into this time they will not understand they will not understand uh, for example now bhagavat puran will give you the common minimum program that's right yeah so ahimsa you know ahimsa satyam astayo kama krodha lobhata 
भूतप्रिय हितेहाच धर्मोयम सार्व वर्णिका सो नो मॅटर विच वर्ण विच ऑफ दिस फोर वर्ण यू आर इन अहिंसा सत्यमस्त अकाम क्रोध लोभता अकाम अक्रोध अलोभ अँड भूतप्रिय हितेहाच एव्हरी वन इज थिंकिंग ऑफ द वेल बिंग ऑफ ऑल लिव्हिंग एंटिटीज ओके ऑल ऑफ दॅम थ्रू देअर स्वधर्म दे आर डुईंग इट हाऊ ब्युटिफुल सो दॅट्स अ कॉमन मिनिमम प्रोग्रॅम and here is a specific program and now you see first two kshatriya and uh, brahman their karma their karma list is guna emphasize guna pradhan and for vaishya and shudra it is a karma pradhan and now you go back to bhagavad gita you know the previous part and it says um, chatur varnyam maya srishtam guna karma vibhaga shaksha okay so the guna is emphasis on the first two karma is emphasis on the others but it's important to remember the guna required for all and karma is also required for all it is only the change of emphasis now quickly last one i'll add uh, the uh, the metaphor i use is like a corporation now it's not like a best metaphor but that's the nature of a metaphor see the person who is at the higher level of management they also do the work okay but they may spend time on some other aspects not the work in the sense if some company is making uh, say uh, gas turbine parts someone in a very higher up even the plant manager is not the someone who is sitting at the machine and cutting the metal uh, with a metal blade or something you know he's he's managing right in a different way he's focusing on some strategic aspect you can say and somebody else is actually one after another cutting the blade putting it there following the process it's there everywhere it's a such a natural arrangement you know that's why the krishna is saying chaturvarnam maya srishtam guna karma vibhagasha no matter how much one wants to run away from it you will not able to do it it is so natural to this creation like the pramad pramad viparyaya vikalpa nidra smriti yeah five vrittis you know five vrittis right. in which each one of them has multiple divisions ha huh. and yeah so back, sorry go ahead if you want and to then, say some and then and then pramad is three types and then the uh, stages in the three types pramad you know the, uh, and then actually there is another aspect sambandh anu uh, sambandh anubandhan abideya mm-hmm. that is on the seva side on the, the bhakti side it is there but here Correct. pramad is pratyaksha anu, anuman but but the, the point is again the this the guna is you know the guna prabhav create this is the ideal nature swabhav but the basic teachings are the same like the morality nyaya niti yeah after that you actually once you know those things then your natural swabhav or, or that improves correct that is a common education but then you have to focus on your qualities yes then then those guna become accentuated then the you know so dharma happens yeah again again to use a metaphor and then of course i'll tell you from the varna and ashram also uh, but just like for varna i said ahimsa satyam asteya akama krodha lobata bhuta priya hiteha cha dharmoyam sarva varnika for Sarvanika. all the varnas all the this varna. is a common program hmm? and if you have to talk of uh, ashrama which is like one person going through different stages of stages. life right Correct. yeah um so sarvashrama prayuktoyam sarvashrama prayuktoyam niyama kulanandana krishna is telling to uddhava yeah. mad bhava sarva bhuteshu is saying everyone having all all people having that mad bhava meaning mad meaning towards krishna towards the ultimate power right mad bhava sarva bhuteshu mano vak kaya sanyama having a sanyam on mana vak meaning intellect and sharir is also common for our all ashramas common like from grahastha ashram brahmacharya ashram grahastha ashram vanaprastha ashram sanyas ashram grahastha ashram is not a license either no okay i mean people just think oh yeah you can do no nothing like that the sanyam is required and therefore it is a different one quick metaphor is this everyone in the corporate world again they may be at a very different levels of working right from the shop floor person to a ceo but in principle they are bounded by the standard company policy of integrity that's right right company policy of disclosure and non disclosure so there are some basic rules that common minimum program is there right and so quickly you also brought up um, 
vritti five vritti from uh, Pat- patanjali's yoga sutra right yes. now th- that also goes back to the first question you asked me uh, like should we bother explaining to them so there is a room for a purva paksha there is a reason when you uh, uh, engage people in debate yeah and there are times when you should absolutely and completely ignore okay and to understand when to ignore and understand when to engage requires viveka that's right matta smrutir jnana apohanancha right so viveka krishna gives you vivek but you have to pray to krishna in order to get the vivek so there also you just said uh, what was that uh, pramana viparyaya uh, vikalpa okay let me just take these three those are my favorite by the way so these people are so opposite of each other that there cannot be engagement between them so on the pramana you have what um, pratyaksha anumana agama pramana that is how you get to the truth your satology get to the truth sat okay and exactly opposite viparyayo viparyayo mithya jnanam atadrupa pratishtha that's right right you viparya exactly opposite of that will lead to false knowledge mithya right. mythology myth okay yeah. yeah people ask me on uh, social media like somebody will use the word mythology when in describing my work okay and this oh yeah the word like this i said i'm glad you pointed it out okay but don't get stuck because it is a brainwashing of last 300 plus years that's right okay? like and then the last one and then now we'll get back to you and we'll get into again subject vikalpa i'll tell you and that's why forget so to, to conclude that point forget the anti india or breaking india forces i mean do we waste our time engage them the answer is no spend time on understanding your own that's right okay uh, that's why i don't like many of these uh, in conferences do you know what happens they read the same old dance stuff that they have written i'm talking of even the pro indic fellows that's right they have written 30 years ago you can see when the notes have become yellow notes paper has turned yellow that's what i that's what happens in the conferences they read the same thing they have not changed anything from 1970s whatever they did sorry go ahead a pro- i was talking to one professor just yesterday hmm. and he said the sign of an intelligentsia hmm. that he evolves in a right direction Hmm. So his first book will be simple, hmm. but his tenth book will be mature. Hmm. That means his first book is worth reading hmm. because you can see his entire journey, hmm. and we are all in a journey of uh, understanding self, not to impress others. Or like I purposely I read books and write books. It's for myself, yeah, and and not for others. But uh, if hmm. anyone reads it, it's it's good for everyone. Yeah. but the, the, the i i like the point that uh, people think that you should not change i said we are manushya yes we must change for better sanatano nitya nutana that's right right by the way the word, so this what the advice given by this professor that you are referring to is a very good advice and i will admit i am guilty of it guilty of not following it you know <laughs> because my first book you can say uh, it's it's full of amazing stuff but it's not easy to read i mean you know guilty as charged i would say well my thinking so i'm admitting it that his what he's suggesting is correct like first book should have been simple and build on it i did not do that no, no, uh, his point but, is not that his point is not that his point uh, is that you may write the best book in the first book very mm-hmm, good mm-hmm. but the author's transformation is seen mm-hmm. based on his latest book ah i would agree this with point that. is totally different yeah, yeah, because yeah. See, we all learning like sanatan nitya nutana yeah. we are learning every minute because our guna are changing correct correct no so, th- th- that is true the, because my second book is better than the first and my third book is better than the second in terms of readability because i was getting feedback from people and hopefully the fourth one would be better than that but my point is the my idea behind that i was not writing a, a hard to read book or a easy to read book i have done lot of research i wanted to combine it you know and i didn't know if i would ever write anything ever again you know so i just said whatever it is there let me just combine it but let's bring those the three points for example uh, uh, the pramana the viparyaya and uh, vikalpa okay how many people are causing confusion let me can i get into yes, presentation yes, get it. Okay. Okay. yes let's begin uh, let me 
start sharing uh, a quick summary for our folks. I mean, I'll not spend much time on it so that we have a stuff for uh, new stuff. Okay, so in this series, we started with Arundhati Vasishta observation that gives us a compact interval. Then we looked at Bhishma Nirvana evidence. It gives us even a further compact interval for the dating of Mahabharata. Okay, a 16 year period between 5,000 and 6, 7,000 years approximately. So within that 1600 year period, 5,125 BC to 6722 BC, that's where the only place based on a Vasa's evidence in the Mahabharata, the Mahabharata war can happen. Then we started going into the planetary evidence. We looked at the beauty of this Vakra motions. Ma Vasudev is using the word Vakra in a very consistent fashion while describing the Graha, Graha evidence in the Mahabharata text and it does not mean retrograde. Okay, It's very, very clear to anyone with a very basic knowledge of astronomy, but there are Adityaji many pretentious fellows many potential pretentious folks even on the unfortunately on the pro india side who will claim that they understand astronomy but they will not understand this this is a litmus test for anyone claiming that they understand astronomy astronomy in general indian astronomy western astronomy modern astronomy no difference but if they say well vakra here vasudev still means retrograde they don't have a knowledge of astronomy that is a litmus test of their capability of astronomy it is that powerful evidence vasudev has created in the mahabharata text because as such it stand alone it is true because mars cannot go vakra within a span of seven nakshatra that's number one but then you ask the question one has to ask the question what's retrograde and again Vasudev has so meticulously, precisely, accurately, beautifully described the retrograde motions in the context of particular nakshatra, nakshatra system at the time of Mahabharata war for Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. It's a lethal combination. Uh, Aditya Ji, we talk about the poison pill. I have used that word in the past and you know I use it um, often. This is a poison pill. These are this is a poison pill as a combination, or each one of them individually is a poison pill. Poison pill to who? Poison pill to anyone who is taking shelter of Viparyaya, deliberately trying to distort what is being stated by Vasudev, deliberately trying to take something selective in an arbitrary fashion to create vikalpa in people's mind, create confusion okay, in people's mind. That is the third uh, sutra with number nine in Samadhi Pad of uh, Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. Shabda Jnananupati Vastu Shunyo Vikalpa. Some jackass is coming and blurting out something, but as soon as you ask for evidence, the person has nothing, absolutely nothing. They just run away or change the goalpost. What is some of the goalpost? Just examples of goalpost. For example, uh, right here on this page, I'll say, see here, Samvatsaras thai nancho graha prajvalito vubho vishakhayo sami pasto brahaspati shanaischaro. Vyasadev is saying, at the time of Mahabharat war, for a long period, which is just Samvatsaras thai nancho, up to a year, which means what? Therefore, you can take the timing of Mahabharat war and go plus minus one years because these planets are going especially the fast moving planets they are going to go through um, a significant portion through the nakshatra system planets like saturn and jupiter will not move much saturn will almost practically not move um, it will just stay within let's say a space plus minus uh, two nakshatra max Jupiter will also stay within, say, plus minus three nakshatras on both sides, you know. So, a sp space of six nakshatra, uh, Saturn will be within three or four nakshatra. That's it. So, you cannot move them. But now, Vishakaya Samipasto Braspati Shanashiro. So, when, I, when people will say, oh, so Nilesh, show me the Saturn and Jupiter near Vishaka for 55 61 BCE. Why are you showing them near nakshatra? Uttara Falguni Hastan Chitra 
and why are you showing jupiter near jeshta mula uh, what is that purvashada uttarashada shravan well, the, i am not showing it is vasudev who is describing a position of jupiter near shravan maga swangarako vakra shravane cha brahaspati so at the time of the mahabharat war you need i mean whatever year you are trying to determine as the year of mahabharat war you need jupiter near shravan so shravan is number 18 here the jupiter has to be in the vicinity no option similarly nakshat uh, the planet saturn is is described twice i mean we, i'll show you today so bhagam nakshatra akramya surya putre na pidate like surya putra is a shani saturn is near bhaga nakshatra it has to be there now in addition to that there is also a, a reference that both saturn and jupiter are in the vicinity of a vishaka now if you understand basics of astronomy guys basics i will call a elementary level astronomy you know nothing nothing even uh, above elementary then you will know why a saturn in the space of bhaga nakshatra like purva falguni uttara falguni hasta that area and is uh, jupiter which is anywhere from jeshta mula purvashada uttarashada shravan in that area will be considered in the vicinity of vishakha but that viparyayo that twisting torturing of the real evidence and creating confusion vikalpa shabda jnananupati vastu shunya vikalpa how is it created by changing the goal post by changing uh, by talking atrociously nonsensical stuff i don't know aditya ji if you know the word in marathi uh, the word for used for such kind of comments is called achrat pana achrat <laughs> i don't know if you have heard from your grandma <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the word achrat there is no other word for it so now suppose they will ask me uh, the why why they are not near vishakha and here is the explanation because this is a jigsaw puzzle this is a crossword puzzle guys don't be so simplistic and even below elementary and uh, like look at this in a very uh, what you call very uh, naive you know novice fashion it will not be there it's there in the mahabharat grantam granti tada chakre munir gudam kutuhala it is full of twist it's full of curiosities and full of mysteries right i mean what is it that you don't get it look for consistency if you have even again a elementary knowledge of science you have to look for consistency the word vakra that i showed on the previous page am i using the word vakra in a consistent fashion i am saying magaswangarako vakra it's a oblique crossing uh, then here krutva changarako vakram jeshtaya madhusudana oblique crossing shravanecha brahaspati oblique crossing again that vakra am i using it consistent way am i showing that in a consistent way 455 61 bc that's what matters next time aditya ji another what we will do is actually uh, i will actually experiment with it to see how clear the simulations are uh, astronomy simulations because that's like you know again another problem if people have never seen astronomy simulation they don't know uh, what are they looking at same thing by the way with a uh, visual astronomy like i have taken folks this is going back many years in canada uh, i used to take high school kids uh, for uh, astro- uh, what visual astronomy at night like same calgary um there was a winter olympic park right olympic park and i just at the top of it a beautiful place at the top of mountains very low light pollution and uh, very clear skies clean 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 you know uh, no dust no dust no pollution and uh, even then like literally in this thing so when uh, through the telescope you show them the stars and you know the, all that they are going to see is like two light bulbs you know through through that and they say okay i see that now what do i do with them so even to appreciate it you need some background knowledge and many times when that is missing people are just in a hurry to be in a limelight this they create this vikalpa and they create this mithya gnana okay so now here they will ask me so you have not show, where where is are they near vishakha i say yeah they are in the samipastha they are in the vicinity of vishakha and they say no 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 they have to be right at vishakha remember uh, last time we talked about uh, a claim uh, actually borrowed wholesale 
okay without one's original contribution without his original contribution by dr dieter koch a swiss uh, astronomer he borrowed it wholesale from professor daptari who have done it like another 50 60 years ago uh, dieter koch is doing it in our times 1198 or 1197 um, bce in that year you will find jupiter and saturn right at vishakha now that is only one observation but again if our people don't spend don't do this tapasya they will say oh yeah that's good mahabharat says vishakha samipasto brospati shanashcharo and dr dieter koch is showing it what dr dieter koch will dare not tell you is that other than that one observation out of 50 plus observations of a mahabharata text or a bishma nirvana evidence or a arundhati vasishta evidence none of it matches for his date and that is i'm just giving his as an example but that is the consistent story aditya ji for 99.9999 plus percent of all existing or past mahabharat researchers who have uh, created generated a claim for the year of mahabharat war okay so now what happens you catch them and you said hold on so yes i am not showing it near vishakha in fact now aditya ji i will say not now meaning i have always said it i will insist that they better not be near vishakha because if they are then the things that i have already explained for example bhagam nakshatra makramya surya putrena pidyate that the saturn should be near bhaga nakshatra purva phalguni uttara phalguni hasta that area i am talking the bhaga nakshatra is purva phalguni uttara phalguni and jupiter which must be near jeshtha also shamo graha prajvalita sadhuma sahpavaka indra tejasvi nakshatram jeshtha akramya tishtati so that is a year ago before the mahabharat war that's why that samastara sthain and chagra prajulit obhav is happening but by the time of the mahabharat war jupiter is near shravana therefore you see magha swangarako vakra shravana cha brahaspati but something else that i'm going to discuss today the pida so we talked about the vakra then we talked about the four uh, pieces of uh, four every uh, instances of four different planets going retrograde all matching to 5561 bc before that let me say something else so now somebody will claim but oh can you show at vishakha i said no i cannot show them at vishakha in fact they should not be at vishakha but if you whoever that alternate other mahabharat researcher is if you are insisting that they should be at a vishakha do you show them for whatever year you are claiming so for just as an example take uh, because many people simply run away from the debate they dare not do the debate okay two individuals who have participated in a live debate with me is uh, my dear friend dr konrad elst and uh, dr manish pandit ji okay both are doctor of a different kinds you know one is a medical doctor another is a doctor in sinology and what not now dr konrades doesn't have a specific date of his own but he did take a position that in his mind it uh, in his mind it ought to occur somewhere from 1400 bce to say 1600 bc okay and uh, manish pandit ji is like taking a claim of uh, professor k s raghavan 3067 bc which was also propelled by uh, late professor narari achar right so during the debate and i would encourage people to go to sangam talks and watch the three part debate between me and dr manish pandit ji there uh, when i talked about this reference manish pandit ji asked me so they should be at a vishakha uh, both jupiter and saturn do you do you show them near vishakha i said no they are the saturn is in the uh, region of a bhaga nakshatra and jupiter is near shravan jeshtha thru shravan and he said well they are not at vishakha i said they are in the vicinity of vishakha then i asked him so are you expecting them to be near vishakha he said well that's what mahabharat is saying right i said okay you are not understanding but let's keep that aside so since you are insisting that they should be near vishakha are th- these two planets jupiter and saturn near vishakha in 3067 this is the point i'm saying how these people will create vikalpa 
in ordinary mind. Immediately he changed the goalpost. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying, hold on, my dear friend, as far as their theory is concerned, and I'll tell you whose theory is that, Jupiter and Saturn, Brahaspati and Shaneshcharo mentioned in the middle verse here, are actually not Graha at all. They are not planets at all. They are comets. I said, be my guest. Because in science, if you understand the Hetu, if you understand the scientific statement of a theory, essentially he was saying, his statement is the planets, the planetary, familiar planetary names that are given in the Mahabharat, such as Brahaspati, Shaneshcharo, uh, Lohitango, Okay, if we go back here, Angarako, Angarako, Brahaspati, okay, these are Shukra, these are not planets. That's what Dr. Manish Pandeji is saying. That is what Professor Narari Achar was insisting. That is what Professor Mohan Gupta insists. These are not planets, but these are comets. I'm leaving this for people to consider. They can take it whichever way they like. If they have a Shraddha, in these individuals, just even out of Shraddha, if they want to accept it, who am I to complain? I will just smile from the seashore, <laughs> you know, just enjoy the, enjoy the fun, you know, the salty water getting into people's eyes and ears and noses, you know, <laughs> what, what do you do? To your point, Aditya ji, do you, do you bother spending time convincing uh, folks who are stuck in a Mithya Jnana and who are stuck in the Vikalpa? Through just Shabda Jnana, Shabda Jnana Anupati, Vastu Shunyo Vikalpo. They will make all kinds of things. The, the story is not over, by the way. I'm going to tell you more fun. Okay. Shabda Jnana, as soon as you, you catch them saying your claim is a disaster, they will change the goalpost to confuse the people. And people are very happy to be confused, Aditya Ji. Okay. So here I said, okay, so they are comments. Fine. Be my guest. Because in a scientific thinking or even a Nyaya Darshana thinking, when you start with a Pratidnya, then Hetu, okay, then Udaharana, like which is to say Drishtanta, and then actually application, and then finally Nigaman or a summary, like, you know, reestablish your Pratidnya. Were you successful in establishing your Pratidnya? So that Hetu is the statement of a, a scientific statement of a theory. So, so in case of Dr. Manish Panditji or Professor Achar, their statement is that these are not planets, but these are comets. Okay. So now for 3067, can you show a comet named Brahaspati and Shaneshcharo near Nakshatra Vishaka? And I would again encourage people to go back and watch those three parts debates. I get into these debates with people even when the the people are not truly debate worthy is to create these things. Even Aditya ji, I would like to thank you uh, for inviting and making this a open platform and inviting people of all hues. You know, it's very important for a, this is the, this is the mantan guys. This is the Samudra mantan. Why is that important? Because if I say, I mean, this happens all the time when I will go to different places, when I give lectures, and I'll say, well, there are people, guys, there are actually people who in their heart, whether they believe it in heart, I don't know, but I don't want to psychoanalyze them. That's why I want them in record, you know, recorded in a YouTube or video recorded saying this thing. So I'm not making it up. I will tell you by the way, I will send you a few other names, Aditya afterwards that you should interview, <laughs> assuming they dare to come on your show. <laughs> <laughs> and you should interview them because the, I will tell you if I get time, the kind of uh, utterly nonsensical stuff they are telling also. So here, back to this story. So now show the comets named Brospati and Shaneshcharo near Vishakha. Do you know what this individual, Dr. Manish Pandiji said during the debate? He said, it is your job. He's saying it is my job to prove that there are no comets named Brahaspati and Shaneshcharo near Vishakha in 3067. This is Mithya, this is a Viparyaya and Vikalpa of the highest order. I mean, 
the, of course, we are all on the camera and we have a very limited time of 20 minutes. You can't even spend time on this. Okay. And the, the audience is not like audience that just showed up there. They are very enthusiastic, enthusiastic, but they have not done their background work. So you have to just go on. But honestly, in Marathi, we say, Hasavaka Radava. I did not know whether to laugh or cry. It was that kind of pathetic answer. That's how they changed the goalpost. So now the person is claiming something such as that they are comets and they are near Vishakha in 3067. And when I ask for evidence, the person says it is my job to disprove his claim. <laughs> That's, that, is, that is a stupidity of a highest order. We pray and we culpa. You know, not only they are fooling themselves, but they are fooling the ordinary simple masses. Okay, that's the problem. That goes on. Uh, Dr. Dieter Koch also, uh, when he he's brought up that evidence of Brospati and Shaneshwaro near Vishaka, I said, Dr. Koch, you get full marks. I mean, I have this whole 10 part series in my at my blog site written about it. I said, yes, you get full marks for showing Brospati and Shaneshwaro Saturn and Jupiter near Vishakha in 1197 BC, the year he is claiming for Mahabharata war. Now let's start talking about other evidence. And I'm going to show you what that other evidence is. This is Vakri. This is retrograde. And okay, here. Okay, there are additional evidence of a Jupiter. There is an additional evidence of uh, um, uh, Saturn. This is not it, guys. Look at this. So for example, here, we have discussed only this Bhagam Nakshatra Makram Me Surya Putrena Pidate. We have also discussed this Samvat Saras Thainancho Graha Prajulito Vubha Vishakayo Samipasto Brospati Shaneshcharo. We have also discussed this. See, this is Shvetograha. I am asserting it is referring to Saturn, Chitra Samati Kramyat Yashtati. Okay. Now somebody says, Shvetograha, how do you decide it's a Saturn? I decided based on a Vivek, looking at all the planets. And looking at all the 50 plus evidence of Vyasadeva from the Mahabharata. But Shweto by itself does not mean Saturn. I That is a, clear to anyone. So somebody will say, well, I don't think Shweto is a Saturn. I would say, be my guest. Just like I told those guys, hey, you think these planets are not planets, but comets. Be my guest. Now show me the comets there, which were visible from the earth at the time of the year you are claiming. And then they run away to another goalpost. In fact, they don't even run away. They say, now, hey, you disprove me. Well, you haven't proved yourself. What is there to disprove? The very fact you cannot show the comets near Vishaka, that itself is a falsification of everything you have said. So this one we discussed, this one we discussed, and this. But even for Saturn, Aditya Ji, there are still three references remaining. Prajapatyam uh, hinakshatram grahat stikshno mahadyuti. Shaneshchara Pidayati Pidayan Pranikodikam. The, the, the one that I want you to focus on, uh, our audience also, the word Pida. Then again, if you look at this here, and my apologies, this is in an Agri script. If you cannot read it, some of most of you would not able to read it. Uh, so then Rohini Pidayan Nesho Stitho Raja Shaneshchara. So Pida, Pida, I, actually I should have underlined this Pida word. Okay. So those two for Saturn. And now let's go to uh, Jupiter. In case of Jupiter, we have discussed this Shravanecha Brospati. Shrav Brospati, Jupiter going Vakra, oblique crossing across the ecliptic near Nakshatra Shravan in 5560 BC. No other Mahabharata researcher can show Jupiter near Shravan. Okay. Now, Shamogra, again, Shamo by itself doesn't mean Jupiter. I am saying again, looking at the 50 plus evidence using a Viveka Buddhi. And evidence-backed explanation, I'm saying this, Sham, I'm asserting that Shamagraha that Vyasadeva is referring to, is referring to Jupiter. Prajvalita is going retrograde, Saduma Sapavaka, Aindra Tejasvi Nakshatram, Jeshta Makramya Tishtati. If somebody doesn't agree with Shamo as a Jupiter and they have a right to do that, this is how science works. This is how Pratyaksha Anumana Upamana Shabda Pramanani works. So they can... Imagine Shama to be somebody else. Not my problem. But now they have to show how that particular planet, why it was a Prajvalita, was it retrograde near Nakshatra Jeshta? And was it there near Jeshta and in a Tishtati mode waiting? That they have to show. 
So this one we too, uh, we did it, did it, and also we looked at this. But there is a one more observation of Jupiter. There are actually a couple more. Those are very minor and uh, not that dramatic. So I have not picked them up. But there is this on the 17th day of the war. And we will stop today, Adityaji, after this. Uh, but we will take those PIDA. So for Saturn, I showed the word PIDA. Okay. So what this uh, will what this Saturn is doing is it's doing PIDA to nakshatra of prajapati prajapatyam cha nakshatra now again you know if you want to understand this people have to do some background homework such as prajapatyam hi nakshatra okay what is the nakshatra of prajapati the answer is roini but either if you are trying to consume this exciting stuff either you know it or you take it on the shraddha now the problem is, but oh, I'm not sure. Well, I heard somebody saying the nakshatra of a prajapati is something else. Then you have created a vikalpa, confusion. You don't have your own clear understanding and you are trying to analyze this uh, evidence. Okay. Fortunately, at least as far as Aditya Ji Mahabharata researchers are concerned, outsiders like, you know, enthusiasts uh, create the confusion. But Mahabharata researchers fortunately agree that prajapatyami nakshatra is always rohini. It is there. I mean... All of our ancient texts are filled with this reference. So that's a Rohini. And in the second verse, if you look at it, it's very clearly stated as a Rohini. Rohini Pidayan Nesha Stito Raja Shaneshchara. Again, what is beautiful is that this is given in the context of a Saturn. Why is this important? Because whatever is the position of a Saturn is not going to move other than plus minus one, two or plus minus two nakshatras within a short span of time. So that's a good thing. Wherever that Saturn is, from that position, it was giving a pida to Rohini here or to Nakshatra of Prajapati. So remember that pida. Then we have to notice the pida here. Uh, and next time I'll explain you what that pida is. So Sakanana, so I will not read this, but the, in the Karna Parva, on the 17th day of the war, when Arjun kills Karna, by the time of uh, sunset. Okay. Vyasadev is beautifully describing the situation of that time. This is very, very important, Adityaji. And so, therefore, I don't want to hurry up on this one. Um, just manage the time well, because this is very critical. Bruhaspati Rohini Samprapidya Babhuva Chandra Arka Samana Varanam. So, after the 17th day, on the 17th day of the Mahabharata war, after Arjun killed Karna and after the sunset, it is saying, okay, uh, th that line is not here of the, of the sunset, but it is there in the Mahabharata. Brospati Rohini Samprapidya. Jupiter was giving Pida to Rohini. So do you notice the common theme? Saturn was giving, not on the 17th day, in general, during the Mahabharata times, giving Pida to Nakshatra Rohini. On 17th day after sunset, Jupiter is giving Pida to Rohini, but something more. Babhuva Chandra Arka Samana Varna, similar to, you know, either it, it can be translated and there are some part of it. One, one meaning there will be Babhuva Chandra Arka Samana Varna. So, Braspati was giving a Pida to Rohini by becoming in its appearance similar to Chandra Arka, similar to sun and moon, okay, their, their color or their uh, hue, you can say, right? Samana Varna, like taking that, he was affecting. And if you see the other part of it, it will say by doing, Jupiter was doing the Pida to Rohini, similar to the way sun and moon were doing it to Rohini. And that is the third reference. I don't have it handy here, so I'm going to say it, okay? <clears throat> So, um, Rohini Pida Yattevo Ubhaucha Shashi Bhaskaro. That is another reference in the Mahabharata text. Rohini Pida Yattevo Ubhaucha Shashi Bhaskaro. Rohini was given Pida by both Saturn, sorry, Shashi Bhaskaro, by both moon and the sun. So, here we have three instances of three different uh, sets of graha giving Pida to Rohini. So Saturn is doing it. 
Jupiter is doing it on, on the 17th day of the war and sun and moon together doing it to Rohini and exactly which day is not mentioned. Uh, next time when we look at it, I will tell you which day sat sun and moon together were giving Pida to Rohini. And we must understand, we must begin with sun and moon together giving Pida to Rohini in order to understand in a scientific and consistent fashion what it means when Vasudev says uh, Saturn was giving Pida to Rohini and Jupiter was giving a Pida to Rohini after sunset on the 17th day of the war. So, for example, and I'll not go here, I'll stop on this slide. So, for example, therefore, just to summary, amazing evidence. We are slowly and meticulously going through this. I do not want to hurry this up because more than likely, I want to create this as a, a depository for all the planetary evidence. And thanks to Aditya Ji, depository of all the planetary evidence discussed in every nitty gritty detail. Okay. And you know what? Uh, like as soon as the Vishwamitra starts doing tapasya, you know, Indra starts sending off this all, <laughs> you know, the apsaras and call because they are all scared, you know. This is what is already happening. Uh, you will see that in a social media, you know, just it's a lot of fun to watch. But we looked at just the planetary evidence. Arundhati Vasishta itself uh, falsifies 99% of the existing alternate Mahabharata claims. Bhishma Nirvana does that to 100% of all other claims except 55, 61 BC and a specific claim of Nilesho, such as Bhishma Nirvana duration, which even Dr. P. V. Vartak missed. Okay. And now we are at a uh, planetary evidence. And planetary evidence, I'm saying, Adityji, that just only planetary evidence can take you to 55, 61 BC. In fact, only if you discuss the Vakra motions of planets and retrograde motions of planets that can also alone take you to 5561 BC. But there is much more evidence. Vasudev has not left anything to chance. I mean, what a great Vasudeva Krupakili, what a great mercy of Vasudev. So we looked at Vakra, we looked at retrograde. Last time, if you remember, we looked at Akramya. There are, there are four instances of Akramya. And they all lead to 5561 BC. And this time I did not explain because of time. But I mentioned three instances of a Pida. Saturn doing Pida to Rohini. And even this, interestingly, this case, it is the same Nakshatra, by the way. So Sun and Moon together doing Pida to Rohini. Saturn doing Pida to Rohini. And Jupiter doing Pida to Rohini by becoming similar to in color or in the same fashion, the way sun and moon were doing it to Rohini. And Brospati is doing this to Rohini after sunset on the 17th day of the war after Arjun killed Karna. So with that, Aditya Ji, I'll stop here. This is where we'll pick up the thread next time. Uh, and so back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Mileji. And one question actually comes in the mind here with all the presentation that you have. What a beautiful, first of all, I must tell you, where, even better than the Akramya, because hmm. it is now going towards the end. Now, when we talk about the uh, planetary positions from the Vedic point of view, hmm. Achatra, hmm. Achatra Nam, and so the the translations, like in English, constellation, mm. yeah. Griha, Griha is planet, sun is a star. Now, in the English language, there is so much confusion. Star, planet, constellation. Yeah. In Sanskrit, there is nakshatra. Everything is nakshatra. And Griha. Griha yeah. is a place of residence where if you look at Matali talking mm. when he takes Arjun to Swargaloka, he points out to all the different uh, luminous objects as hmm. griha. Yeah. He doesn't talk of them as uh, nakshatra. Hmm. So don't you think that the, the entire Western cosmology is questionable by creating, uh, like, for example, black holes. Hmm. Now, uh, black holes is very commonly referred in, uh, in uh, chidra. Chidra is hmm. called chidra hmm. in uh, Sanskrit. 
where where the uh, it is referred to as the vishnu's pores in the body hmm. where he sucks everything in when he breathes in when he breathes out everything comes out there you go that's, that's the concept what a great of, metaphor right yeah yeah and then he breathes in everything comes in when he breathes out ek anishwas takala mathavalam dya jeevan tilo mavila ja jagadanda natha yeah vishnu mahane yasya kala visheshu govindam govindam adi purusham tamaham bajami that is brahma ji is saying you know yes so here in one shloka he has explained the vedic version of cosmology yes. now now when when we now when my question is now when we analyze the western definitions and all the things they are amazed at ufos alien invasion extraterrestrial i have watched so many extraterrestrial movies and i could make a head and tail out of it <laughs> and and the alien invasion and all yeah. these things yeah. for me it just looks like the western world is just creating everything for artha sanchayan nothing else income yeah uh, i think there is a truth to what you are saying just for the purely astronomy part i would say uh, i do not see personally i do not see any problem with the way they will use the word uh, like a graha as a planet or um, surya as a star Uh, and one a constellation see what they did is uh, they looked at a cons- uh, they took a group of stars in a certain area and to kind of remember it they did it they called it constellation so like say ursa major for example uh, ursa major ursa minor you know uh, that is actually not a uh, new concept even in a west i mean as western astronomy it's not new concept but even for western astronomy itself they would have borrowed it but even if they could have come independently and uh, actually there is sufficient evidence that they borrowed it by the way uh, but for example uh, the ursa minor is a dhruva matsya in in our case or ursa major is a saptarshi and what you will find is actually i mean this is not to again criticize so i'm saying i'm not objecting to that constellation that's perfectly fine but since you brought up the subject i'll take ursa major for example what you'll find is uh, when people show ursa major like the big bear it's not very easy to imagine uh, in that saptarshi constellation but saptarshis are very easy to imagine imagine meaning very easy to show so but that's fine i mean some people have taken different names uh, kasopia you know i mean if you take all of these names uh, kashyapa that is by the way kashyapa you will see that these names have traveled through the silk route okay through to greece uh, to turkey to greece to arab world from there they have moved with additional modification to spain and from there they have entered the modern astronomy so the, the constellation concept as a group samoh like a, say take mrugashirsha um, so that's like a kala purusha you know or uh, rudra or nataraja so nataraja as a constellation concept was there with us you know we also had that mulaka i mean rup uh, ask rupa vati ji rupa vati ji <laughs> will go gaga over this and she will tell you uh, she, all of these um, uh, then uh, we have the shuna shiro and punarvasu punarvasu are also like four stars on the two sides of the ecliptic so we we had that as a concept but the second point dhana sanchaya i would say honestly uh, even uh, let's not find fault on the dhana sanchaya if dhana sanchaya done in a right way i don't think we should object to it the right way is the issue but even the indians are unfortunately sometimes guilty of i mean many times guilty of it otherwise right <laughs> more 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 we have to we have to admit our faults you know more uh, for example uh, like the greediness that you will see in the interaction is just amazing you know among among indians right maybe because of deprivation or whatever it is but otherwise uh, say take i will we'll end up on that otherwise um, vaisheshika sutra it begins by defining dharma yato abhyudaya nishreyasa siddhi sa dharma the things that are done of course in the dharma construct okay for prosperity and for getting the best in the world that nishreyasa is not the material best but prosperity is a material best right you know anna vastra nivara the yato abhyuda abhyudaya prosperity nishreyasa and the best that is there Now the best of a highest kind, so it's not limited to Indian. See now, immediately people translate this as a spiritual best or something. India, there is no dichotomy of like a material versus spiritual. That's you know, right? That's right. Right? The spiritual is that together. There is no separate words like that. So, anyways, uh, we may might have gone longer, but we can stop on this.
thank you so much and thank you for all the viewers for watching and do comment on the video and thank you for liking the kaliuga video of nilesh ji tremendously it's still going strong it had 3000 views plus 15000 just understand for our channel 15000 is a 1 million <laughs> that's how you should calculate these are real numbers real numbers so <laughs> no likes no dislikes and uh, never promote the channel and we depend on you to promote the channel yeah quickly they i'll tell you they asked me there was a question asking me like i have a small, a small channel by small channel i mean uh, very occasionally i put a video there and they said uh, somebody asked nilesh why you have so few views i said i don't promote it it is there you know i want people to come to that in a pull fashion in a pull it, fashion because they desire it and they find the knowledge here that's why i want them to come you know yeah back to you but, sorry but still uh, in the in in india now we are considered top 3 mm. but, and even though our views are 10% of the nearest channel 10% subscribers only mm. but thank you whatever whoever loves it thank you so much and thank you for all the americans who love this channel and i know many of the americans they regularly watch it and thank you for all of you for support and we are also starting the american yogi section very soon and you will see tremendous number of videos coming on yogis of usa Namaste and thank you. And also Hollywood stars, just wait and watch. Namaste.